Black hair is responsible for our evolution as a species. Imagine walking through the African jungle 200,000 years ago, covered in sweat with a blazing sun, and you see a hungry beast in the distance. You have no weapons, and you're not with your tribe. And at that moment, something as small as a flash of light reflecting off your head has just given away your position, dooming you to be preyed upon. But there was one villager who managed to survive that primitive tiger, and it was not due to his strength or speed, but because he succeeded in camouflaging himself among the weeds thanks to the color of his hair. That was the first thing the black hair figured out. In that hostile environment, something as simple as the color of your hair could mean death. This color contains the highest concentration of humulonin, a dark pigment that absorbs light instead of reflecting it. Its function, absorb light, avoid reflections, eliminate any glare that might expose you in the jungle. Since lighter colors reflect sunlight, black absorbs it, preventing the shine that could reveal your location. They are more prepared for intense light than other colors. Contrary to popular belief, this type of hair did not cause more body heat. It acted like a micro-textured umbrella. In the early African communities, the scalp needed protection from brutal sun exposure, and dark, thick hair served as an adaptive thermal insulator. That is why almost all early human populations developed this type of hair initially. Today, more than 75% of the world's population retains this color. What we call common hair today is actually a trace of our adaptive intelligence. And although it is not associated with rarity, it remains the basic genetic code of the human being. When someone is born with black hair, it is not a mutation or a rarity. It is staying connected without interruptions to the starting point of the human being. But there's something more. When you look at someone with black hair, you're not just seeing a color. You're looking at a genetic signature that survived ice ages, migrations, and deserts. It's hair that doesn't attract attention, but it has been here from the beginning as a silent constant. The curious thing is that in a world where the rare is valued, black hair becomes invisible and yet has been the most functional for thousands of years. That's why, even though you see it every day, black hair is not there to stand out. It's there to hide you just when you need it most. Blonde hair was not going to survive. It was too visible, too light, and offered no advantage on the African savanna. And yet, here it is. It was not in a warm climate, nor among palm trees. It emerged much further north, where the sun barely peeked out and life depended on making the most of every last ray of light. At some point, between the Baltic Sea and Siberia, about 11,000 years ago, a genetic mutation triggered an unexpected change. The production of melanin drastically decreased. The result was hair that did not protect from the sun, but let it pass through. And there was the key. The body needed vitamin D to survive, but fair skin was not enough, so the hair also became light. Not as decoration, but as a biological solution. Today we know that it was the MC1R gene that made this change possible. This mutation altered the way the body transformed dark pigment, creating blonde variants ranging from pale gold to almost white. And in climates where the days were short and light was scarce, that mutation was key. It allowed for more ultraviolet radiation absorption and the production of vitamin D, essential for bone development, pregnancy, and newborn survival. But the evolutionary advantage was not just biological. In small groups, blonde hair became an extreme visual marker, something that stood out. It contrasted among many dark shades and immediately caught the eye. In the early European settlements, rarity became attractiveness, and attractiveness became sexual selection. For centuries, blonde hair was interpreted as a sign of youth, fertility, or even divinity. In various Germanic cultures, it was said that the gods had hair the color of the sun. And although only 2% of the world's population naturally retains it, its presence is everywhere, in the media, art, and mythology. Ironically, blonde hair ages faster, tends to darken over the years, become brittle, and lose its shine. And yet, it has survived as one of the most imitated traits on the planet. It is neither resistant, nor discreet, nor functional in extreme conditions, but at a certain point in history, being visible was an advantage. 
and that simple mutation, almost useless in terms of camouflage or protection, became one of the most successful in human evolution. And there is still something else that almost no one mentions. Blonde hair, in many cases, is not designed to last. In regions like Oceania, Melanesia, or even parts of South America, there are populations where many children are born with blonde hair and lose it as they grow up. It is believed that this phenomenon appeared as a way to make children more visible and socially protected in small groups, an instinctive attraction mechanism to ensure care, nutrition, and protection. And once that role is fulfilled, the body replaces it with a more functional color. It's as if blonde hair, in its purest form, was created for the years when a human being is most vulnerable. Light brown hair did not arise from the cold or diet. It was the way we looked at each other. For thousands of years, dark hair was the norm. It absorbed the sun, concealed movement, and offered protection. But at some point, that was no longer enough. Imagine a small settlement in Europe 8,000 years ago, a small group, isolated from the rest, where almost everyone looks the same. And then, someone different appears, same skin tone, same features, but the hair a little lighter, brown with golden highlights, and something changes in the way they look at them. That difference, although minimal, triggers a new type of response, curiosity. And in evolution, curiosity can be as powerful as necessity. Light brown hair emerges when melanin levels drop slightly compared to black or dark brown tones, but not enough to become blonde. It is an intermediate zone, and precisely because of that, it became exceptionally common in temperate regions, balancing protection against the sun and visual versatility. It is not so dark as to absorb all the heat, nor so light as to be exposed, but the interesting part is what happened next. Light brown hair began to spread faster than genetics can explain by simple mutation, and according to several studies, it did so again due to sexual selection. A softer tone was associated with youth, health, and a certain familiarity that generated trust. It was a color that was not threatening, that did not stand out excessively, but that attracted just enough, and that made it desirable. Today, millions of people have it, but under the light, that same color can change. Golden in the sun, ash colored in the shade, and caramel under certain light bulbs. It is not fixed or flat, it is an ambiguous signal that never fully reveals what it is, and that, in evolutionary terms, is an advantage because it is the most adaptable. Red hair was not a common color, nor functional, nor necessary. And yet, it happened. About 80,000 years ago, a silent mutation altered the MC1R gene, and the result was something no other human had seen. Red hair. Not copper, not reddish brown, but natural fire. A color that offered no camouflage, no sun protection, and did not go unnoticed. And yet, it survived. Biologically, Red hoar is a contradiction. It has little or no eumelanin, the dark pigment, and a large amount of pheumelanin, which gives it that reddish tone, sometimes even orange or bright copper. But this composition makes it extremely sensitive to sunlight, heat, and damage. Red-haired people burn their skin more easily, feel pain differently, and even require more anesthesia and surgeries, and yet, this phenotype has persisted for millennia. Why? Because being rare is sometimes an advantage. In small communities in Northern Europe, where dark hair was the norm, red became a visual trigger. Novelty generated attention, attention led to attraction, and over time, sexual selection. And myths soon appeared. Redheads have been called witches, seers, bearers of divine blood. In Scotland, they were attributed a direct connection with supernatural forces. In Mediterranean cultures, it was said they brought bad luck or had an impossible temperament, and yet they were always present, like an anomaly the world could not ignore. This is a clear example, that despite natural and sexual selection going hand in hand, there are always exceptions, like in the case of moose with their antlers. But that's another topic. Today, only 1% of the world's population has natural red hair, but that small figure hides a story of resilience, because this color does not protect, does not camouflage, does not make life easier in almost any environment, yet it never disappeared. Premature white hair is a mistake that was not corrected. It was not a sign of old age or weakness. 
it was a biological warning that arrived early. In some people, before the age of 30, even from their 20s, hair begins to lose color. It doesn't fall out, it doesn't change texture, it simply turns white. And for years, science treated it as a minor body flaw. But evolution does not leave errors without consequences. What happens with premature graying is simple in appearance. The cells responsible for producing melanin in the follicles, the melanocytes, stop functioning. And when the pigment disappears, the hair comes out without color, neither black nor brown nor blonde, but white. And it's not that the hair turns white as such, it's hair that no longer has anything to dye it. But the interesting part is when and why it happens. Studies have found links between premature white hair and overactive immune systems, resistance to oxidative stress, and, in some cases, greater genetic longevity. It is not a guarantee, but it is a pattern that often repeats. In ancient times, seeing someone young with white hair was rare, and for that reason, it was impossible to ignore. That contrast, young face, old hair, provoked immediate respect, fear, or mythification. In many cultures, white hair in young people was interpreted as a sign of early wisdom, spiritual connection, or a type of genetic distinction. In some Asian regions, it was said that those who had it had seen something ahead of time, and in certain shamanic traditions, it was believed that spirits accelerated their external aging to mark them as guides. Today, premature graying is more associated with stress, nutritional deficiencies, or genetic inheritance, but its social effect remains the same. It draws attention, breaks expectations, and turns the person who has it into someone who stands out without seeking it because it does not represent the passage of time, but something much stranger, a part of the body that decided to go ahead of the rest. People with silver or natural hair look like they are from another world. It is not white, nor gray, nor ash blonde. It is real silver, and when the light passes through it, it becomes metallic. This extremely rare phenomenon is not due to age or albinism. It occurs when the amount of pigment in the hair is so low and so unbalanced that the hair fiber reflects light as if it were a polished surface. The result is a cool, shiny, and completely atypical tone, as if the hair had no temperature. The most curious thing is that although it sometimes appears in people with genetic conditions, it also occurs in completely healthy individuals. In some rare cases, it is indeed linked to Wardenburg syndrome, a genetic condition that affects the pigmentation of the skin, hair, and eyes, and can be accompanied by hearing loss from birth. People with this syndrome can be born with silver hair, eyes of different colors, or skin with lighter areas, but not all cases of silver hair have it. A real and widely known example is Kudia Diop, a Senegalese model who has had a silver streak since childhood without having any illness. Her case went viral, not only because of the striking nature of her image, but because it broke all traditional representation standards of hair color on dark skin. This type of hair reflects light specularly, which means that, at certain angles, it can appear metallic blue, violet, or cool white. And that contradiction between the biological and the artificial makes the brain unable to classify what it is seeing. In rural regions, they were attributed with enhanced perception abilities, vision of two worlds, or even family curses. In Japan, they were associated with the figure of the fox spirit, and in some indigenous tribes, it was thought they were born under eclipses. Today, it continues to be one of the most photographed, sought after, and fake features in the world of aesthetics, but in its natural form, it is an evolutionary accident that refuses to go unnoticed. Orange hair is the color that cannot make up its mind. It looks like redhead, but not quite. It seems blonde, but not quite. And that is precisely what makes it so rare. Imagine being born with hair that changes every time someone describes it. In winter, it looks like copper. In summer, old gold. In the shade, it is reddish. Under a light bulb, almost pink. That is orange, a color that seems like a mutation halfway through. But here comes the strange part. This tone is not an aesthetic gradient, nor a random mix. It is the result of an extremely precise combination of pigments, very little eumelanin, like blonde, and some pheomelanin, like redhead, in proportions that should not remain stable, but they do. In genetic terms, it is a functional anomaly so rare 
that there are entire regions of the planet where not a single case has been recorded. For centuries, this hair puzzled the cultures that observed it. In Scandinavia and the British Isles, it was said that those who had it were made for the mist as if they were part of the weather and not the body. In rural Europe, they were attributed with good fortune or old blood. And today, only a small percentage of the world's population has it naturally. People with this tone also tend to have greater thermal sensitivity, and in some studies, a different skin response to extreme cold has been observed. So it is not just a color, it is an external sign of how the body processes temperature and light. And the most curious thing is that there are documented cases of children born with bright orange hair, which darkens over the years and lightens again in old age, as if the body is remembering and reactivating it after decades of silence. And that makes it one of the strangest colors produced by genetics, hair with bands. There are people who don't need to dye their hair to have two colors. At first glance, it looks like a reflection, but if you get closer, you see that the hair is made up of alternating bands of light and dark color, as if someone had painted microscopic lines on each strand. And the strangest thing is that they don't disappear with a haircut. They grow back the same way. This phenomenon is called pili annulati, and occurs when there are microscopic air bubbles inside the hair shaft. These bubbles scatter light and create a visual pattern of rings or stripes that changes depending on the viewing angle. It's not an external optical effect, it's inside the hair. Literally, the hair is hollow in some areas. The strange thing is that it usually doesn't cause harm, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't affect health, but under a microscope, each strand looks like a genetic binary code made of light and shadow. In the medical history, it is considered a benign hereditary alteration, although extremely rare. Most people who have it don't even know until someone notices it under a strong lamp or direct sunlight. There are documented cases where the pattern is so pronounced that the hair seems to shine at intervals like a biological optical fiber. For centuries, it was believed to be a blessing, a magical defect, or even a sign of noble blood. And although science has demystified it, even today, it is not fully known what activates it or why it remains stable, hair heterochromia. This is not like hair that changes with light. It is not an optical effect or an illusion caused by unstable pigments, nor is it like hair with microscopic bands. Hair heterochromia is different. It involves entire areas of the scalp that decide to grow with another color. In some cases, it's just a light streak in the middle of a dark mane. In others, it's as if the head is divided into two identities, blonde on one side, black on the other, without any smooth transition. This phenomenon occurs when different areas of the scalp produce melanin unevenly. The result, natural strands of different colors, perfectly visible from birth. In some cases, it's subtle, a lighter streak in a sea of brown. In others, it's striking, half of the head blonde, half black, or a single white lock on dark hair, like a scar of light. And this is not something that changes over time. No matter how you cut the hair, it grows back the same. This phenomenon can have different causes, but in many cases, it is associated with genetic conditions like piebaldism or chimerism, where different cell lines with different genetic codes coexist in the same person, that is, one head with two different color codes. Some variants are also related to rare syndromes, like Brandenburg, the same one that can cause different colored eyes or congenital hearing loss, although many people with hair heterochromia are completely healthy. Interestingly, popular culture has embraced this trait as a symbol of the unusual, from anime and comic characters to artists like Sia, whose two-tone wig is a visual homage to this phenomenon Historically, it was thought that those who had it were marked by something external, a promise, a punishment, or a memory of another body. And although today we understand the process better, why certain genes divide the head into such distinct regions from each other remains a mystery. Don't forget to support this type of content by subscribing and watching this other very interesting video that you will love.